By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Friday, and that means we are back at the Knights of Thorn edition number eight. This grand old school tournament is held every year in Deventer, the Netherlands, and we have reached the semi finals a top four match and we've got two top decks lined up we have ron who is playing blue white control it's kind of the deck but then he's playing it with some really cool creatures ma multi jins are in here a full play set of sarah angels so it definitely has more you know contents more beef than your regular the deck and he is taking on coast and coast we've seen this deck in action before here in these series of the knights of thorn he's playing with power monolith now if you've missed any episodes before and you'd like to watch them back check out the description below because there you will find a link to the playlist of knights of thorn 8 so you can just at your own convenience check out all the previous matches that have been played and there you can also see this deck of coast in action now before i jump into the deck text i would just like to point out that in that same description you can also find timestamps one of those timestamps reads mtg games if you click on there it'll take you straight to the game so you can kind of skip the deck deck i know some people enjoy first looking at the games and then at the deck uh, the deck text or some people actually just skip the deck text altogether it is all up to you but like i said the easiest way to do that Check the description below because there you'll have all the timestamps you need to kind of go through the video at your own pace, at your own convenience. Now that you're fully informed, uh, we're going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Ron. Let's take a look at his blue and white control brew. And here we see the deck of Ron. Now, this is pretty cool, isn't it? Um, it looks a lot like the deck because we see some of the components that the deck has. You know, you've got your white control package, short supply of stairs, disenchant, uh, you know, you've got your balance, wrath of God in this one, which is nice. You don't see that in a lot of the deck builds. Um, and then you also have, you know, your blue control with your four counter spells, obviously all the blue power. You've got the recall, the mana drain is the extra, the fifth counter spell. Then you've got your brain geyser. So, so far it's, you know, it's what you would expect. You've got your two jam day tomes. So it's really like your, the deck. And then what I'm liking about this is we're not seeing a fireball, you know, as a finisher. Um, we're only seeing two books because Ron needed to make some space for these super cool creatures. So we see a full play set of Sarah Angels. You don't see that often in these the deck builds. And we see two Mahamoti Jin. I think that's really cool. And of course, he also has the four Mishra's Factory. So he really wants to win it by dealing combat damage. So just controlling the board. He's a very slow player. He doesn't need to rush. I mean, he can take his time winning the game. That's what the deck does, right? And then when he's got full control, he's going to win with probably his, you know, heavy flyers. But if that doesn't work, if they get killed in the process, it actually doesn't matter because he still has his four Mishra's factories to give him the, the victory. We also see those two, you know, black cards that we see so often in these type of decks, the Demonic Tutor and uh, uh, the, um, the Mind Twist. They're just too good not to put in your deck and you only need one black to put them in there so it's quite easy with your mana fixing and your mox and then of course your black lotus is or lotus i should say because it's restricted you know to kind of put that into the deck um then when we're looking at the sideboard again we're seeing some interesting cards we see a reverse damage which i really like i mean he could have gone for example for a second circle of protection red but he's going for reverse damage i think that's really cool ron let me know in the comments below if you've actually used it in this tournament hopefully we're gonna see you use it in this uh, match because it would actually be a pretty good sideboard card against uh, against coast we also see um a phantasmal terrain another card that i think oh that's kind of cool and funny and funky that you're playing that one phantasmal terrain in enchant land that lets you turn any land into another basic land type so any land so you can turn a library of alexandria into an island for example it's quite nice i think in that regard it's for me better than a magical hack because with magical hack you can change a basic mountain let's say into a basic island or a basic swamp right but you cannot um change those non-basic uh lands so that's why usually i think phantasmal terrain for me is slightly better than a magical hack in that sense if you're playing it purely to to take care of lands of your opponent but okay that's a whole different discussion i'm kind of sidestepping here we also see two city in a bottles there in uh, in the sideboard of ron and of course he's not playing with a lot of arabian knights himself he's playing with i believe only one city of brass in there and he's playing with um 
Ooh, that's interesting. Is that a Diamond Valley that he's playing with as well? It's kind of hard to see. And he's also playing with a Library of Alexandria. That's kind of a no-brainer, of course, at Library. But I think Diamond Valley could be good in this deck as well because of his big, beefy creatures. Um, we're not seeing, for example, uh, we're not seeing Control Magics in this deck. So he's really going for, you know what, I'm just going to destroy the the creatures of my opponent or I'm going to counter them. I'm not going to steal them. I think in these decks, Control Magic could be good, but I do kind of understand that Ron has taken another direction here. Um, so yeah, you know, kind of makes sense. It's, it's all about those choices, right? You know, what kind of choices do you make? And I guess Ron is making the right choices because he is here in the semifinal. Maybe a nice uh, uh, side note here is that I actually played against Ron at this tournament with Timmy Spellbook. It was 1-1. I was about to win. I'm sure you'll admit that too, Ron. I was about to win. But yeah, we were running out of time. And that's, of course, also part of Tournament Magic. You only have 50 minutes during the Swiss rounds. But of course, now in the top eight and the, the semifinals and the finals, there is no time limit. So this game could take forever. I mean, I'm sure it won't. But theoretically, they could still be playing cards right now. Anyway, this is the deck of Ron. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Power Monolith. And here we see the deck of Ghosts, right? So this is Power Monolith. So it's named after two card cards, Basil Monolith and Power Artifact. So what Basil Monolith does, it's three to cast. You can tap it for three mana and then you can untap it at any time, but also for three mana, right? So you, you take three out, but you're going to have to pay three back eventually to untap it. So it's a pretty balanced card, right? Well, not really when you've got Power Artifact, it's, it turns into infinite mana it's insane so power artifact a card from antiquities enchant artifact for two blue you put it on an artifact and then you pay two less for its activation cost whatever that may be so for example if you put it on a jam day tome usually you would pay four and tap for a card now you pay two and tap for a card but when you put it on basil monolith something weird happens right because you can untap the basil monolith for three but with the power artifact, you only have to pay one to untap it. So you tap it, you gain three mana, spend one to untap it again, tap it again. So, you know, you gain mana, 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 mana. You have infinite mana. What are you going to do with the infinite mana? You're going to cast a huge fireball or a disintegrate and you're going to win the game. It's as simple as that. So what Coase wants to do really is assemble power monolith and then have a burn spell in hand to disintegrate or a fireball and win the game. That is the strategy of Ghost. So this deck is usually really good pre-boarding because after sideboarding, your opponent, of course, knows what you're up to and, you know, they can they can find ways to kind of, you know, make sure that you can, don't get your Basil Monolith and your Power Artifact combination, especially against Ron's deck. You know, the deck has so many answers. He can counter the key pieces of Coast. He can disenchant the key pieces of Coast. He can, you know, he can do all sorts of things. He can board in his COP red and his reverse damage. I think this is going to be a really, really tough matchup for Coast. That being said, yes, Coast can still very much win because if the cards align, if he's got the right counter magic to kind of protect his assets, he can definitely win. I mean, this is not a done deal, but I would say that looking at the deck of Ron, for me, Ron is a favorite because he's got so many answers. And, you know, the thing is as well, in this tournament, you, you start to find out who's playing what. So probably Ron already knows that Kos is on Power Monolith, and this gives him an advantage, of course. I feel these... Um, you know, these these decks, these combo decks are, of course, better if your opponent doesn't know because then you almost always win the first game, right? And after that first game, then it's up to the sideboard plans to see what happens next. But now you're later on in the tournament and your opponent probably knows what's going on. So he already knows I'm playing against Power Monolith. And yes, he, he cannot sideboard against it, of course, in game one. That would be illegal. But knowing already gives you so much like information and can change your game and how you react to cards, you know. So th that's just a lot of info that you already have. Of course, that also goes for Coz, who probably already knows that Ron is on some kind of the deck version. Uh, so it does go both ways, but I feel like the combat player is hurt more than the, um, you know, than the non combo player. Um, looking at the sideboard here, of course, we, I do see some some interesting cards that he can uh, he can put in there. We've got two abysses, which I think uh, could be relevant against uh, against um, against Ron because of those creatures that he's playing, you know, four Sarah Angels, two Mahamotis. Of course, he can also just board in his red elemental blasts. They're great to protect against all the counter magic of Ron. And of course, they can kill the Mahamoti Jins. So there are some, uh, some pretty good options in here. I think Blood Moon could also be quite interesting because Ron is playing with a lot of dual lands and non-basic lands. So Blood Moon could be a killer. Of course, you know, Ron has got the counter magic 
to protect himself from Blood Moon, but I think Blood Moon would be interesting to put in after that game one and when they go into their sideboards, right? Anyway, this is the deck of Coats. We've looked at the deck of Ron. It means we're ready. Let's go to the semifinals of the Knights of Thorn 8th edition. Game number one, here we go. And look at that. Ron is taking three mulligans. He's putting three cards on the bottom there. Does it mean he starts, what, four cards? He's on the play as well. He's not even going to draw. Wow. Wow. Anyway, uh, look at him go. Your Mox Jed and a Mishra's Factory. Ron is on uh, the deck, but then with creatures, I guess. Uh, Sarah Angels and Mamotis. He's taking on Kos, who's on Power Monolith, and he's starting with two Mox in there into a Felwerstone. That Felwerstone makes no color yet, by the way, because the only land on the side of Ron is a Mishra's Factory. And now we're going to see if Ron is going to attack. He can just attack freely, but maybe he's got better things to do than attack. He's got islands in hand, so he can play a land for turn. First, he's going to attack, though. So, Kos is going to go to 18. I'm expecting him to play an island here. Or, maybe he doesn't want to give Kos an island. Because, remember, when he plays an island, that Felverstone can make blue mana. Exactly. Ron deciding not to play any mana out. So, that's quite interesting. We see a Library of Alexandria there in hand of Kos. Maybe Kos is going to choose to just uh, draw up to 7. Nope, he's going to play out his cards, it seems, playing a Loa into a Basil Monolith and passing the turn. But he's got no blue mana, so he cannot play out any of his blue spells, and I think that's why Ron is deciding not to play out... Ooh, he is playing out of planes, though, disenchanting the Basil Monolith and passing the turn. So he sees the importance of Basil Monolith. Now, now his Felwerstone at least makes white mana, and there is another Basil Monolith and a pass. Let's see if Ron is going to attack with his factory. He's playing out a duel there. Now they're altered, so it's kind of hard for me to see what duel this is. It could be a Tundra, but it can also be a, uh, a Scrubland, for example. There we, see, there we see blue, so he's got access to blue now. He's got a lot of mana sources. We see some counter magic there in the hand of coats. Kind of hard to see. We will just have to be patient. Tapping two here, it seems. What is he going to do next? There is a Felwerstone on the side of Ron. I wonder if Ron's going to attack here with the factory, or if it's if he deems it too dangerous, if he'd rather just have his factory around. He is animating and attacking. Having two blue open for a potential counterspell if, for example, Coase decides to play a, a Lightning Bolt, which he doesn't have in hand, I believe. Anyway, he's going down to 14, and he's just passing the turn. So actually, this game is going quite well for Ron, considering that he had to go down to four cards in hand because he took three mulligans. Attacking here with the factory, again, Coase on 12. Two cards in hand, I believe, here, playing out his Mox Sapphire and passing the turn. Isi's going to do something on end step. There is a power sink. Interesting. He plays a power sink. I'm liking this. Does that mean that he's going to play a power monolith next turn? So he's going to play a power sink on the Mox Sapphire. So that's going to force Ron to tap all his lands, meaning that Ron cannot counter next turn. And also he cannot use his white mana to play a disenchant. So this is a very good choice by Kos here. So is Kos going to go for the kill next turn where he plays a power artifact on Basil Monolith? This is very interesting. And there is a mana drain on the power sink. So, you know, Ron is really understanding the importance of keeping his blue mana open, of keeping his white mana open for a disenchant. And Kos is just waiting for that one opening to play his power artifact on his bezel monolith and basically play uh, probably a disintegrate or a fireball after that to win the game. Now let's see what Ron's going to do.
Looks like he's tapping two. Is he going to try to play a disenchant here on the Basalt Monolith? Ooh, he's playing a balance. There's a counter spell. That balance would have been really good because that would have meant that Coast would have to discard his entire hand. And he's also untapping the Basalt Monolith. Are we now going to see an attack as well? Probably it's like a free attack. And Coast is on 10 already. So already 10 damage being dealt by that single Mishra's Factory. It's starting to become a problem here. And Coase has what he needs in hand, but what he needs here is an opening. But the hand's empty now. He's going to play a time walk. This is so interesting. Ooh, look at that. That is fascinating. A time walk into a time twister. What? I believe he already had a power artifact in hand, but I guess it wasn't a power artifact. Maybe it was the time twister. I could see he had, I believe, a fireball in hand, right? Again, it's hard to see. But I guess he didn't have a, a power artifact, or else he would have played that out, probably. Although I can understand this line of play as well. Remember now, Ghost can start the turn with a fresh hand. He played that time walk. He already has that Basil Monolith. So next turn could be the end of the road in game one for Ron here. I mean, power monolith is so explosive. Now he's still in his turn, remember that, he's still in his first turn. And of course the Loa becomes active as well, that's brilliant. So he's going to untap now, take on his extra turn, there's an Ancestral Recall. I think if you're coach, you want to try to finish it right now, but you of course have to... You need a power artifact, that's your starting point. If he has one, I mean... I, Look at look at the side of Rondo. He's got a Mox Sapphire and an Island untapped, so he can counter a potential power artifact. I think he's just going to go for it, though. Power artifact. Does he have the counter spell? If he does, he's going to play it out. Ron going through his hand. It looks like he doesn't. Or does he want to keep his counter magic for something else? He's going to draw an extra card. There is the Fireball. And he's going to play... Oh, look at that! No counter magic! And only disenchants he cannot play out. It's done! This is it! It is done! Maybe you're wondering why is he not tapping any mana for the Mind Twist. That is because that power artifact was on the Basil Monolith and that means infinite mana. So he doesn't care anymore about even untapping it or showing how it works. He has got infinite mana. But this is how explosive power monolith is, man. And this is going to be a tough... Not to crack for Ron. He's one game behind. Remember, it's a best of three, top four. Let's let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Ron, of course, on the play after losing that first one. Starting with a duel and there is a Black Lotus and a pass. There is a Volcanic, also a pass. So let's see, are we going to see a turn to Sarah? I mean, who knows? It's possible. He's playing with the play set. He's got five mana. Nope, just passing the turn. There is an island by Coase, also just passing. But now, of course, Coase has counter magic open. I believe I see a Felwer Stone in hand there for Coase and Island. And the rest I cannot identify. And Ron playing a basic island, also passing turn. So both players really kind of sitting back, waiting for the right moment, knowing, of course, that they both have a lot of counter magic in their decks, making it difficult. And sometimes with these counter wars, the one who starts, who plays out the first card, actually ends up the worst. You know, initiative is not always rewarded in Magic. So more lands here by Ron. And he's going to do something, it seems. Tapping two, play a Circle of Protection red. No response by Kos. So he's just accepting it. There is a City of Brass. Of course, Circle of Protection coming from the sideboard, really good against uh, the Fireball, which is the most important win con for Kos. So does it, this mean that we're in for a long game? I see a Time Twister in the hand of Ron. I believe Coase also has a Time Twister. Not quite sure, though. And look at that. Ron is just passing turn. And why wouldn't he? I mean, he's fine, you know. There we see a Basalt Monolith. Are we going to see a Counterspell by Ron? No Counterspell. Maybe a Disenchant on, on end step. 
There's the Disenchant. Oh, actually, it's a Divine Offering. That means some life for Ron as well. So he's going to go up to 23. That's pretty good. Divine Offering, a card from Legends. Uh, one white and one to cast for an instant. Destroy target artifact. Gain life equal to the casting cost. It's really nice to play against robot decks, you know. If you can kill a Tetravis or kill a Triskelion, you just gain 6 life. It's insane. But it's also really nice for GM Day Tome IC. It's really good, and, and I always pack a few in my sideboard when I play white to sometimes, you know, take some disenchants out, put some divine offerings in if if my opponent only has artifacts that they want to remove with my disenchant anyway, I might as well use a divine offering. Not much happening still, both players just playing out some lands and passing turn. Actually, Koz is not even playing out a land, it seems. Asking about the cards in hand for Ron. Ron has four cards in hand. We see seven cards in hand here for Koz. I guess he doesn't have any lands in there or else he would have played them out. I see a, a red card there all the way on the left. I see a counter spell, perhaps a power artifact in there, but I'm not quite sure. There's a Basil Monolith in there for sure. He's got enough mana though to play out a Basil Monolith and protect it with one counter spell, but that may not be enough. The problem, of course, for Koz is that Ron's deck has so many answers. It's got Divine Offering, it's got Disenchant. It has counter magic. It now also has the COP red on the table. This is going to be a really tough battle for Koz. <laughs> and Ron also really in the tank, trying to find the right moment. Ooh, look at this, tapping quite a lot. Are we going to see a creature here? No, a jam day tome. There's a counter spell on the jam day tome. And no response. He's fine by that. So I think. If you're Ron, already when you made this play, you kind of decided, I am not going to sack my Lotus to protect the Gem Day Tome. I think he did this consci consciously to make sure that another counterspell is out of the hand of Coast. Maybe next turn he's going to try to drop a Sarah Angel. Now we also see a Black Lotus there in hand, in the hand of Coast. Going to tap two, going to take a damage. Okay, changing his mind with the tapping there. Anyway, tapping an island and a city of brass for a demonic tutor. What is he going to pick up here? Is it just going to be an ancestral recall? Maybe a time walk? You know, if, if, if he times it right, because I do believe he's got um, a power artifact and a basil monolith in hand. Ooh, what's that? Is that a mind twist? It looked like he picked up a, another black card, and I think... Maybe he boarded in some abysses, but why would he look up an abyss now? I believe it's a mind twist. And this is going to be really difficult for Coast to kind of time this mind twist right. When to play this out. Here we see a Black Lotus. Is he now going to go for the mind twist? I guess he is, or else he wouldn't have looked it up. Mind twist for four, or for five, actually. He's got the Felwer. Is he going to do it? And then will there be a counter spell? There we see the mind twist. Keeping one blue open, possibly for or one red open for a red elemental blast to protect the mind twist. Mm -hmm. So he's playing a mind twist for four here, forcing the hand of Ron. If he has a counter spell, he's gonna play it out. Nope, he doesn't. He's gonna lose his cards, and this is offering an opening here. A really precious opening for Kos. And of course, card card advantage. This is a really good moment for Kos. But Ron, of course, still has that COP red. That COP red could be the problem. And Coase has enough mana now to play a Basil Monolith with a power artifact on it, but then he doesn't have any mana open anymore to protect it, you know, so if... Let's see what he's going to do here. Okay, Basil Monolith first. Probably going to pass turn, because if he plays a power artifact on it right now and Ron happens to have a disenchant, he's toast, right? He's losing... A two for one, he's losing two key cards. He doesn't want to do that. So I think this is a good decision. Ron now with two cards in hand. And he's probably going to play the power artifact now with counterspell backup. I believe he's got a power sink in hand there. Power artifact. There we're going to see a disenchant or counterspell. Disenchant. Ooh, he doesn't have enough mana though. He's not going to survive a power sink. Does he have a red elemental blast? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, he's going to play... Oh, of course, he's got the Basil Monolith if he can tap. And there we see Ron sacking the Lotus so that the, uh, the Disenchant isn't countered. And look at that. That really cleans up the board. 
There we see a Mishra's factory in the pass. So things things are not going great for, for Coase. On the other hand, Coase did manage to get the Mind Twist in, but now he's got a Time Twister and a Wheel of Fortune, which is basically giving Ron cards. Is that something that you want to do? <laughs> After that successful Mind Twist, there was this opening moment for Coase, but with the Disenchant play by Ron, there we see the Time Twister. And I, I mean, if you're Ron, you're kind of okay with this, right? I mean, you're like, I'm going to draw seven cards. I got my COP red, whatever. You know, I've got mana open, so I'm probably going to draw into some counter magic. So whatever Coast can play after the Time Twister, I can probably counter it. So, yeah, I, I think for, for Ron, you're not really worried here. So both players drawing their seven. Let's have a look. Ooh, look at that. Two counter spells. Red Elemental Blast there on the side of Coast. That's what I can identify. Hard to see what's in the hand of Ron. Ooh, Ancestral Rico on end step. Are we going to see a counter spell? There's a Red Elemental Blast. Are we going to see a Blue Elemental Blast? There's a Blue Elemental Blast. Are we now going to see a counter spell? There's a... Yep, there's a counter spell. Are we going to see another counter spell? Nope. That was a nice little counter war sub game going on. And I guess the plus side here for Ron is that, uh, you know, Ko's wasted two counter spells and he only has one land open. So basically giving Ron some space. You know, Power Sync does nothing, counter spell does nothing. The only thing that can really hurt him right now is if Ko's has another red elemental blast in hand. <laughs> we also see a counter spell in hand by Ron, by the way. He can, of course, also just choose to attack for two, you know, whatever. But it kind of feels like there's an opening here. And we haven't really seen the bigger creatures hitting the board by Ron. I, th I think the problem, of course, with that is if he does that, he's tapping out so many mana. I mean, if we look now, he's got six mana open. So if he plays a Sarah, that's five mana down and he cannot counter anymore. If he plays a Mahamoti, all his mana are tied into that Mahamoti cast. That is super risky and probably not the best move. So he needs a lot of mana before he can cast those bigger creatures. This actually helps. And a Mox and a land drop. Tapping two here. Okay, there we see a Demonic Tutor. And of course, you know, there, there cannot really be a response here by Coase. He cannot cast, you know, I mean, he can play a Power Sync for zero. You're not going to do that. Um, he cannot play a Counter Spell. And of course, he cannot Red Elemental Blast a black card. So this is kind of a free Demonic Tutor for Ron here. And of course, Ron taking his time. You know, this is an opening for him. I think, I think if you're Ron at this stage in the game, you're like, I should win this now, you know. Which may sound odd, but I think with the COP Red on board, with his type of deck, if he doesn't make a mistake, he should win. That being said, you know, it's still magic. Anything can happen. And of course, Kos is a great player. He has won his fair share of tournaments. And again, now he's in the top four, so he's... Yeah, he's, he's a phenomenal player, and Ron knows this as well, of course, so he's not going to underestimate Kos. And that's all going through your mind, and again, remember, top eight, top four finals, they don't have a time limit. Ron, of course, already played out his ancestral recall. A Time Walk could be a good card in a specific scenario, but I'm sure he's not going to look it up right now. A Mind Twist could be something, but he cannot cast a Mind Twist. If he would have a black mana, a Mind Twist would be ideal right now. Looking at his hand again, trying to figure out what's the best thing to do. I mean, another option can be Mind Twist with Counter Backup. So you pick a Twist, now you play it next turn. And yes, of course, then Coast has untapped and probably can counter, but... You know, maybe you're lucky, or maybe one counter spell to back up your mind twist is enough. You know, it could be. I mean, there are, I believe, four cards in hand by Ko, so they're not all counter spells, right? So Ron here looked up the card. Gonna shuffle up. And 
And look at that. Is he going to animate now as well? He is going to animate and attack. Why not? Putting Kos here on 16, passing the turn. I do believe now that because Ron passed, I think he looked up a mind twist. We'll, we'll see next turn. In hand, I see a red card, a sea of brass. Is that a counter spell as well on the side of Kos? Power artifact in hand there. He's got, I believe, five cards in hand still. And let's see what Ron can do. Does he have that mind twist? Is he going to play it out? This is so tricky. I believe Ko's also... Oh no, oh no the, the Wheel of Fortune was another hand. No, that's not this hand. He shuffled that away after the Time Twister. I wanted to say I believe Ko's also has a Wheel of Fortune hand, but that was the other hand before the Time Twister. So I think we see a Fireball there, a Power Artifact, a Counter Spell, and another card that I cannot identify in the hand of Kos. In the hand of Ron, we don't know. We know Ron has one counter spell in that hand, but we don't know what he looked up. I think it's a mind twist. And it looks like Ron's going for it. Because he's got that black mana in hand. Is he going to play a mind twist here for four? There's a mind twist for four. There is the mana drain. There is a counter spell on the mana drain. Are we going to see? There is a counter spell on the counter spell. Oh, that's it. That's it. So the other card I couldn't identify was the mana drain on the side of Ko. So Ko's here being quite successful. I mean, on the bright side for Ron, at least Ko's is down two counter spells, which is something, including the mana drain. And Coast needs to find a Basil Monolith. Ooh, yeah, playing a Time Walk. That helps. Gonna untap. Can he find something now? Nope, he can't. And this, of course, is difficult for, for Coast as well because he knew he kind of had an opening there after the counter war, but then he cannot find his key pieces. Another attack with the factory. Coast dropping to 14 and... Look at that, Coast just passing the turn. Things are looking quite good here for Ron. Coast on 12, Ron also passing. This is why Mishra's factory is so good. You know, when there's like a stalemate with these control decks, you can just say, okay, you know, I'm fine by that. I'm dealing damage anyway. Look at this, Demonic Tutor on the side of Coast. Are we gonna see a counter spell on the Demonic Tutor? There's a Divine Offering here on the Felwer Stone. I think that's a good decision, actually. So now he's going to look something up. He's got Power Artifact, Fireball. He needs a Basil Monolith. The problem, of course, for Ghost here he needs to, is that he needs to get rid of that COP Red. Does he want his plan to work? So I wonder what he's going to look up. Maybe it could be a Chaos Orb to flip on the COP Red. Or, of course, an Ancestral Recall, <laughs> which is usually the play. I mean, it gives you extra cards. There is a Brain Geyser. That is ideal. Yeah, the problem right now for Ghost is that, you know, he needs to find the cards in the right order. It would be better for him to now draw into a Basil Monolith, play that out, put the, the Power Artifact on there, you know, then play out a huge... You can actually win with a huge Brain Geyser. You can deck your opponent, right? That would be really cool. There is an attack. He's going to go down to 10. So he could play a huge Brain Geyser on Ron, forcing Ron to draw his entire deck. And then when it's his turn and he can't draw, he, he dies. He's deck dead. That is a scenario. It's super risky, you know, but it's a scenario. There is a Mox Sapphire in the pass. And of course, while I'm chatting, talking away with you, the, uh, the workshop, the Mishra's workshop keeps... Uh, sorry, Mishra's Factory keeps attacking and attacking and attacking. Coast now down to 10. There's the Felwer Stone by Ron. I mean, I guess he's just going to attack again, putting putting Coast on 8 here. So Coast is on a 5-turn clock. And, and we haven't seen any Sarah Angels or beautiful Mahamoti Jins, by the way, from, from Ron. Animating again, attacking again. Coast going to 8. 
The factories are doing work in this matchup. There's a Basalt Monolith. Are we going to see Power Artifact? Oh, there we go. Disenchant in response. Oh, wow. Counterspell here on that one. Are we going to see a Counterspell? Another Disenchant. Ooh, this is really good. And I forgot the name, by the way, of that uh, Counterspell. It's from Legends, one blue and one, and it counters target instant or interrupt. And it comes from the sideboard of Coast, and it's great against white decks because it stops, and blue decks, because it stops a Counterspell and it stops a Disenchant. But after this, um, this failure from Coast here, because there was a double Disenchant by Ron, I, I, I think Coast is not going to win this one anymore. He needed this one to kind of get through. So I think Ron has this game number two. That would mean that we would go to game number three after this one, because it would be 1-1. One, one. We're not there yet, though, but that uh, other Mishra's factory is going to help. So I'm sure he's going to animate the factory, bump it with the other factory, dealing three points of damage, putting Coast on five. It looks like he wants to do something else first. There we see a Divine Offering taking care of the Mox Sapphire. There's a balance. That is why he played that other Divine Offering. That explains it. Oh, it's looking really good for Ron. Now, no cards in hand anymore for Coast. That is a big problem with two factories on board. That is a big problem. Now, he cannot attack with that one because it's got Summoning Sickness. He can attack with the other and, of course, pump it, putting Coast on five. No, he's not. He's not dead yet, Coast. Take it easy. You're on five. You've got one last turn. Make use of it, please. There's the attack. Putting him on one. There we go. What are we going to see? Nope. That's it. That means Ron wins game number two. It is one, one. I really love this game, guys. Very, very exciting stuff. And what I love even more is that we are going to game number three. Get ready. Game number three, here we go. So this is the deciding game. You know, whoever wins this one will continue to the finals. And you can see the finals right here on Timmy Talks next week, Friday. So there's a Volcanic Island played by Kos. Let's have a look at seeing Ancestral Recall in hand there by Ron. Is he going to play that out immediately? Of course, running a risk to maybe get it countered by a Red Elemental Blast. I do believe that's there in the hand of... Coast or not, there's one red card, no Ancestral Recall, just a pass. And also Coast playing an island and a pass, so the stare down has started again. Both players playing with a lot of counter magic and just taking their time and again showing how good Mishra's Factory is because you cannot counter a land. You can play it, then you can slowly start attacking with it. And that's how Ron won game number two. There we see a City of Brass and a pass. He's probably going to animate an attack for two here. Coast dropping to 18. There is a Library of Alexandria. Not quite sure how many cards Ron has in hand. But he's already played out a Felwer Stone, a Black Lotus, and a Mox. So I don't think it's close to seven. Looks like he's got four or five cards in hand. Here we see a Basalt Monolith being played out. Are we going to see a Counterspell or a Disenchant? We're going to see an Ancestral Recall. Of course, that's also an option. And that is really good, of course, in combination with the Loa. I believe he's now going back up to 7, so he can activate his Loa, go up to 8 and draw card number 9. Or does he have 7 in hand now and activate? He's got 7 in hand now, and now he's going to activate go up to 8. Things are looking really good for Ron here. Remember, Coase is also tapped out because he played that Basil Monolith, so a lot of options here for Ron. He can play, of course, a Divine Offering to destroy the Basil Monolith, but maybe he's got better options. Still has the Black Lotus. If he can have a land drop, he could potentially play out a Sarah Angel and keep the Black Lotus untapped for counter magic. So Ron, a little bit in the tank here. Trying to figure out what to do. He's got eight cards in hand, so he's got a lot of options. Playing out a duel first. 
Is he just gonna pass here? He is just gonna pass, not even attacking for two. I didn't expect that. There's also a pass here in the Library of Alexandria by Coast, by the way. And uh, Coast got six cards in hand, I believe, so very close to an activation. Then we're gonna see a Divine Offering on end step. So he's gonna gain three life, gonna go up to 23. And Coast doesn't really mind this. And Coast, of course, wants to go up to seven as well, so he's got an active Loa. Really interesting that we didn't even uh, see an attack by the factory the previous turn. Because Coast was tapped out, it was wide open. Here we see Ron drawing card number eight. I wonder what he's going to do. What is this? What is he going to do? Another dual land. Now again, it's hard for me to identify these dual lands because they're altered. I think those two are tundras, you know, when I look at the color scheme of the altar. And maybe the other one is a... Uh, a blue black one. We'll just have to wait and see. But I think I think I mean Ron is pretty good with the mana. Also the Felwer Stone now making any color mana because of the city of brass on the side of the coast. Tapping two, there's a demonic tutor. Already played out the ancestral. Is he going for a mind twist? To empty the hand of Coast, or at least make force Coast to play out a, uh, a counter spell. I do think he went there for the Mind Twist. And now Ron's shuffling up again. If he can get the Mind Twist to stick, then it's looking really bad for Coast. So there he goes. And now we're probably going to see the Mind Twist play. Seventeen live for Coast, 23 for Ron. Game number three, 1-1. One, one. Whoever wins this game will continue to the finals of the Knights of Thorn 8th edition. Just a pass. This surprises me again. I expected him to, to just go for that uh, mind twist. On the other hand, you know, the chance, of course, of uh, of Coase having a counter spell in hand was pretty big. So I think that Ron wants to play it with counter backup. He's first going to draw an extra card from the Loa, by the way, and then draw a card for turn nine cards in hand. And I mean, with these matchups, it's all about timing, right? I mean, you can have the best card in hand, but knowing that there's so much counter magic in the game, you really got to time it right. You got to know, you know, what can your opponent do? Can you back up your spell with counter magic? Can you back up it double with counter magic? You know, after sideboarding, you know your opponent has a red elemental blast as well. So you got to take that in consideration before making a move. It's, it's quite complex. Especially now that both players have quite a lot of cards in hand. And Coase almost has that active low. And that's, of course, something that uh, Ron wants to prevent. There's a Felwer Stone. I really wonder what he's going to do. Is he going to go for the Mind Twist with Counterspell Backup? I wonder. It looks like he's not because he's attacking... Putting Coase on 15, it seems, and passing the turn. And there we see Ron actually discarding a card here, having 8 in hand, discarding Jam de Tome. Is that an Ancestral Recall? I believe it is. Playing out the Ancestral Recall. Are we going to see a response here by Ron? I think this may sound weird, but I wouldn't counter this. Because, you know, Coase already has an active Loa. He's drawing so many cards. Ron is drawing so many cards. Let it be and maybe focus on the key pieces. We know that Coase will have to discard to 7 at the end anyway. 
He's, he must have like nine or ten cards in hand at the moment. Hasn't played out a land. Does he have a land in that hand? I'm not quite sure actually. Okay, he does. He's got a strip mine. That is actually pretty good because the strip mine can take care of the factory and of course the Loa. I mean, in this case, I guess you would go for the Loa, right? Because he's got an active Loa. He's going to discard. Look at this. Discarding two fireballs. He's got to discard even more. Discarding three fireballs. Really? Wow. That is interesting. So I think that his reasoning here is that he can get the fireballs back through a time twister anyway. And of course, he also plays with a recall. And he just wants to keep his counter magic up. There we see another Mishra's factory. So he can at least deal three damage. And I wonder if Kos is in response going to use his strip mine or is he going to use the strip on the Loa? I mean, taking care of Mishra's factories is difficult for Kos, actually. Oh, look at this. He's going to tap quite a lot. What is he planning to do? Tapping five, it seems. No tapping even more. Two, four, seven. Are we going to see... There is the mind twist. There is the mind twist. The mind twist that he had in hand for so long. Now he's going to play it. Interesting timing. I wonder if that means that he has counter backup in hand. He must have, right? Now remember, a red elemental blast, of course, does nothing. I'm just expecting a normal counter spell here by Coates. I know he's got a um, power sink in hand. Ooh, but that's not really good in this scenario. Power sink and a counter spell here on the power sink. Oh, that is devastating here for Coates. And I was just expecting a regular, good old-fashioned counter spell by um, by Coates backed up with a red elemental blast. But it just wasn't there for Coates. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you don't have those cards. And this is devastating for Coates. I think. Ah, it's going to be really tough for him now. He's on 15. Remember, you know, Ron still has an active Loa, I believe. He can hit for four each turn with the double factory. And yes, of course, Coast can destroy one factory with the strip mine. But and look at this. I think Ron is now going to play a Sarah Angel. Try to put some more pressure on the board. There is a Sarah Angel. No counter magic and a pass, so he's not even attacking here with the factory. Again, I'm surprised. I would I would maybe activate one factory. Yes, you want to keep your mana open to counter, but he had enough mana. And look at this, attacking for eight, putting Kos on seven. This is the last turn for Kos. Nope, that's it. He is done. I actually didn't expect that Mind Twist to get through so easy. And once the Mind Twist took care of the hand of Kos, it was game over ron winning here with a 2-1 victory and and advancing to the finals of the knights of thorn 8 congratulations ron and here we can see his deck oh man unfortunately we didn't really see the mahamoti jins but at least we saw the beautiful sarah angel helping you to the victory that was, a, that was a good match. Thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and it really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. All that really, really helps. Another thing you can do is you can become a Patreon of the channel. I should say a patron of the channel via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Um, and if you do, you can already support the channel starting with just $1 a month. And if you do, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can uh, actually play a game against me if you like. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. Every video, yes. And that includes this one. So let's take a look at the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Just think it's a somber cuisine.